Good evening and welcome to the Sound Off Show. My name is Linda Kirker. I host the program and I, I'm just so happy that you tuned in tonight. I think we have a really good program for you, my guest and I. And um, I hope you didn't get caught out in that uh, downfall, that downpour of rain, and I, I heard some thunder too. I was in the house all day until I came out to the show tonight. Um, but I know this, I've been having to water my garden many times over the last uh, several days, so I really welcomed the rain. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to start the program tonight. And by the way, I would like to encourage you, if you're so inclined, as we go through the show, uh, to feel free to call in with a comment or a question. We'd be happy to hear from you on whatever topics we happen to be discussing. Okay, so here's how I'd like to open tonight. I sent this article that I wrote yesterday. I sent it over to the St. Albans Messenger. I don't know when it'll be in. Uh, in the paper, but if you don't get the messenger, then here's your chance to hear what I had to say. And if you do get the messenger, then you'll have the benefit of reading it and hearing it. Okay, here it goes. Now recently, uh, just in the last several days, our governor said that we need to be tolerant and accepting. Well, here's my letter. Just how much are we to tolerate and accept, as our governor suggests? The ultra-left is working hard and successfully to divide and conquer our nation. We the people had better start standing up and speaking out if we have any desire to keep our constitutional rights. It is shameful that rebel rouser groups are allowed to disrespect our historic landmarks, statues, etc., with impunity. They should be in jail. Confederate statues like that of General Lee should remind us of the great nation we are because under President Abraham Lincoln, our nation did away with slavery. All Republicans in that Congress in the 1860s voted to free the slaves. Too bad that the Democrats did not. Our children deserve to be taught that they are blessed to live in a nation where they have individual rights and opportunities provided to them by the United States Constitution. The infighting in this nation must stop. Who are the neo-Nazis, the white supremacists, Black Lives Matter, etc.? I have no idea who they are. They're foreign to me. Who is directing the uprisings and the riots? And they are being directed, believe me. Who's recruiting the rioters and transporting them around the country? Who has the money to do that? I suspect that funding comes from George Soros, a man who hates the United States of America and our way of living free. And I would not be surprised at all if Obama was doing some community organizing to, to assist in the dissension. We are better than that, America. But we need to wake up before it is too late. Support our police in enforcing the laws and stand up like a proud American citizen. Let us preserve the founding principles of this unique nation. America is a concept, an ideal. It is about freedom, not free stuff. Our job as Americans is to defend the concept of liberty, free enterprise, limited government, and individual rights and responsibilities as a U.S. citizen. How are we the people doing? That's my question. I hope you folks are paying attention to what's going on in this country because there are a lot of forces at work. You have the atheists trying to take away religious rights. You have our schools uh, under Common Core 
which I see as a disaster, and I know that a lot of parents and students and teachers do not like Common Core. I am in hopes that under the Trump administration that the, the new Secretary of um, Education, Betsy DeVos, w is working very hard to design a better system of education that can be more um, less controlled by the federal government and more empowering to the states and the communities. I'll stop there and I'm going to invite my guest and friend, Norm Goslin. Welcome back. <laughs> good to be back. Yes, good to have you back. I know you think about all these things that are going on in the world and in our country and in our state, and it's always nice to hear your thoughts. So what would your opener be if you were the host of the show? Well, <clears throat> my opening would be, my theory is, <clears throat> to hell with Black Lives Matter. As far as I'm concerned, all lives matter, mm -hmm. including yours. And the oath I took was to preserve your life whether you like it or not. And I could care less what race you are from, and color has no meaning, unless you are a former president. It should not matter. And of this late age, 72 years of age, I am still willing to die for you, as I have not been relieved of my sacred oath. I may be old, but was and am a soldier. And I'm still soldiering as we speak. And that oath I took was 50 years ago as a young innocent man <clears throat> right here in St. Albans in high school. Good for you. I like that. And I agree with you 100% that, like Martin Luther King said, the color of your skin does not matter. It's the content of your character as a human being that matters. I, I don't see a person's color, per se, when I'm talking with them. I, I want to hear what they have to say. It's funny you say that, because uh, a few years back, I, I wrote an editorial to the St. Albans Messenger, and uh, a lady that seems to write a lot into the Messenger called me a racist. <laughs> well... One of the individuals I served with in the Vermont Army National Guard, he turned around and answered that woman's letter. Oh. He did a good job. He did it in very, very few words. <laughs> he said, if Norm Goslin is a racist, you're for Walmart. End of discussion. <laughs> oh, that's Never funny. had a rebuttal on that. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. no. Uh-huh. That's interesting. Well, it's nice to know that someone will stand up too, stand up in defense of, you know, for what they believe too. When I served in the military, I served in the military with folks of black color, uh, people of Orientals, all types of people. And I was proud to be with them. And some of them were real good soldiers. Absolutely. You know, it, your skin doesn't define what kind of a soldier you can be. Exactly or even what kind of a person you can be. They're good people of all skin colors. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to remember that we are one nation under God. And we have people of all sizes, shapes, colors, you name it, abilities, and we're still all one America. And we need to respect that. Mm -hmm. We need to respect one another. And I'm still appalled of the fact that some of our senators, uh, one of our Vermont senators made mention of the fact that Black Lives Matter. <clears throat> they were still riding the coattail of Black, right, Black Lives Matter. All we, Lives Matter. We have Three. a caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Well, I'm glad I'm calling into this Republican show tonight. Oh, good. I'm glad you are, too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't called in a long time because I've been uh, quite busy, so. I understand. I've been busy myself. Yeah. Well, we start digging a hole October 1st. Fantastic. Yeah, That's we great. we got all our permits, all the financing and everything, but we won't be in it until uh, around April 1st. Okay. So uh, it's been a long process, $21,000 in permits, $99,000 in attorneys, and a 
architects and engineers, and everybody's got their hand out. Of course. I, I wouldn't build an equal in Vermont, even though it'll melt at the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, my gosh. You know, if we, you know what? If we truly want development and jobs in our, in our state, we have to look more carefully at what we're doing to make it difficult for people to create jobs. Yeah, very much so. You know, Ben and Jerry's is building a $30 million addition. How much do you think their permits are? They're at the maximum. How much do you think that is? That would be interesting. I bet you could find out, couldn't you? 184000 Their permits? Permits. Uh, to build that, a uh, $30 million addition. I got that right from Tim Smith. What is that, based on your income? <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, uh, yeah, I believe there should be permits so everybody knows what's going on, but the, the cost of the permits is what's hurting a lot of businesses. Of, uh, of the course. The Peerless is putting in, uh, taking down one of their old buildings and putting in a new building. Yes. Uh, Two-story, and they get $142,000 in permits. So, isn't that crazy? Now, uh, does all of that money go to the state? State, some probably federal because you got to have a detention fund. You know, on our little three quarter inch, uh, three quarter of an acre, I have to put a detention pond and swales up there. I um, got to put in 165 feet of sidewalk. I got to put in a plug in station for somebody that's got a plug in an electric car. Oh, I my put in gosh. A Maybe that person should plug in before they leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know. I yes, usually it... don't give compliments very often, as you know. But I was very proud of Donald Trump last night and what he said. Wow. I'm yes. going to fall off this chair. Well, you know, you're part Republican, whether you want to, uh, uh, you know, deny it or not. <laughs> well, I got a call for the Democratic Party of Vermont tonight. And they wanted a $150 donation. Uh huh. After I got done with him, he hung up on me. Good for you. You know what? The uh, people of both parties need to hear the truth from we the people. That's and, right. and they're not doing their jobs. They are just not doing their jobs under the law, under the Constitution, for the, and for the people. And their job is to represent us and the best interest of the people and the nation. I'm and glad you said both parties. I agree. I agree with that. I'm not happy either. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's sad that we need to put people back to work. And if we have jobs, you know, we get more, more, uh, more people off in the social services and give them some way of feeling good about themselves, uh, jobs with pay and benefit. You know, uh, so we don't have so many people on social services in the state of Vermont. It's unbelievable. Do you know, Dave, um, uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, the Republican Party of Vermont is having an event coming up the end of the month, and our governor is going to be there along with Jim Douglas and um, Governor Sununu of New Hampshire. And uh, I have a proposal for our governor uh, along those lines. I want to know, and I'll be making some phone calls um, probably tomorrow, to the Labor Department of Vermont. I want to know if the Labor Department has a listing of all jobs that are open in every community in the state. Then I want to know if they are working with the Agency of Human Services to place people who are able, able-bodied to, uh, who live in those particular communities or near them, match them up with jobs. Yeah, yeah, you know, I know Norm. I've known Norm for quite a few years. I know him and his wife, you know, and... Uh... You know, if he had to go back to work right now, he ain't afraid to get his hands dirty. No, neither am I. Yeah, and uh, that's the way we were brought up, you know. But, you know, not too many, I'm going to talk about volunteerism. Not too many people anymore volunteer. Mm-hmm. I like the idea in the high schools where you got to put in 12 hours, but I think that should be more than 12 hours to, in order to graduate. 
You know, in the years that I've uh, started the Maine Society and been involved in public access, I have over 40 years of public service, no pay. Yeah. And that's because I believe in what I'm doing, you know, and I think, you know, it's like public access. You know, by you doing your shows and we putting on over 6,000 shows a year, that is an asset to the shut-in and to the people of Franklin County. We're now up in Enosburg Village, Enosburg Town, Richford, Montgomery, and we're also into Fairfield a little bit. I know, it's wonderful, just wonderful. And um, and I want those people in those extended uh, communities that, that have been added recently, that they are more than welcome to to phone into and um, have a word with us, that we'd more than welcome that. I was just thinking of my um, years of volunteerism. Uh, I was a scout leader years ago, but also 12 years here and then 11 years in the State Guard. That's what? How many is that, 23? About. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting old. We can't remember. I wasn't a math major. <laughs> but, um, yeah, well, you know, you're appreciated, Dave. You, you're a good soul. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad that you spoke out to your party as I plan, as I have done many times, and as I plan to do at this upcoming gathering. Uh, yeah, well, you know, he started at uh, $150 when I got done. Uh, he said, I guess I ain't getting a donation from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Where does it hurt? In the pocketbook. Yeah, yeah. But and, you know, uh, I think our senators and our congressmen and our local representatives, you know, they've got to start working for the people that put them in office. How about the only time you hear from a lot of these politicians, whether it's in Montpelier, Washington, is when it's free election. Oh, absolutely. So, I don't think lobbyists or companies should be giving money to people that are running for office. I, I agree 100%. I was just thinking before I left the House, um, I believe I read that the teachers' union gave $300,000 in the last election to candidates. Well, I didn't get one, one red cent. I was endorsed by the teachers' I was endorsed by the AFL-CIO, and I did not accept anything. And I got money from uh, the Nurses Association. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I did not accept that. You know, I feel that I don't want anybody to buy my vote. Yes. I'm the same way. I know how he is. And so am I. That's yeah. exactly what I told people when I was running for office. Yeah. It's called, um, what is it called? Um, you have a conscience. Yeah. Um, and you, you're going to do the right thing, regardless of if someone gave you money or not. Yeah. Honest people will never make it in my fear. <laughs> you, have to, you have to talk the bull. That's what we call our, we call our show, the political bull show. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Listen, I think Norm has something he wants and, to And you mentioned volunteerism. Uh, well, well, seeing, seeing how you open that up, that subject, I also encourage the other Franklin County veterans to come and join us at the uh, hospital. We have what's known as a... Uh, uh, we have the v veterans volunteers. Sh and, the shuttle bus. And we do yeah. the shuttle bus. Yeah. And to give you an idea what that feels like doing that, uh, I liken it to giving blood without the needle. That's the kind of satisfaction you get when you end up helping some poor person that's got all they can do to get in their car. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I know, Norman, you know, you, you do a lot of good for a lot of people in Franklin County, you know, and I like seeing you on a public access, you know, and of course, you know, Linda, you know, sometimes we have a difference of opinion, but we have a lot of respect for each other. Yes, and I we can't, do. And I can't say I work, I don't get paid. I work for food. <laughs> the hospital gives us our lunch, yeah. which is really nice. Well, you know what? When we're older and we have a, some flexibility and we're able to be of service, I think that that's, uh, that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, I also want to thank the People's Trust Bank because they're the ones that, uh, you know, that we uh, negotiated with uh, to get our loan for our billing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the local bank that wanted to keep it local. You know, we went to a lot of credit unions and banks, and we even went down in uh, Bennington. I, and I said to my executive director, I said, I ain't going to the People's Trust Bank. 
as I said, you know, I know a lot of people on the board of directors, and I'd rather keep it local, and we ended up staying local. Good. Support your local community, absolutely. That's right. So I've, I've talked enough. I'll get off so somebody else can call in. And I haven't heard from uh, George Costa's wife. Uh, Diane. Diane. And she hasn't called tonight yet. Yeah. Well, you know, it's always nice to hear from her. You know, every time I go up and see her, I always ended up staying an hour and try to get out of there in 20 minutes. It doesn't work. <laughs> Have a nice night. Okay. Right. Take care. Good night. He said he's a good guy. Yeah, I think he's more Republican. If, That's what I think, but he, he doesn't like to admit it. No. <laughs> In fact, I've uh, told him that more than once. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to ask you a question, Norm. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about sanctuary states and cities that protect illegal immigrants? Um, and how do you feel about sanctuary states and cities being defunded? I'm glad you asked that question because as far as I'm concerned, I think uh, people serving in government should be bonded because uh, they don't follow the oath they took. Also, I think these sanctuary cities, they should lose the funds given to them from the American taxpayer and they should not be funded because if they took an oath to protect their people, protect and defend the Constitution. And as far as I'm concerned, the Constitution is the people. We make up the Constitution, whether they like it or not. Yes, and um, I've thought about this a lot. And I, I think that, the, like you say, Norm, the job of our government, whether it be state or federal, is to protect the citizen, the American citizen. And my, my concern is this, that Vermont is a very generous state welfare-wise. So we already lure people here mm -hmm. for benefits. When, when people who are in this country illegally find that out, and then on top of that find out that our government is going to protect them from ICE, then we're going to see a lot of people come in. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Well, this phone call is for Dave McWilliams, <laughs> my friend. Okay. I got off the couch just for him. Oh, oh. I wasn't going to. I was just going to sit and listen and behave myself. But when he mentioned that I hadn't called in, I said, well, I better call and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and say hi to him first. Oh. And I think what has been said tonight is very, very true, that we may not all agree on certain issues, but when you can sit down and talk to people and try to hammer things out respectfully, we can get the job done as a community or a state or a nation. But when you start bringing in hatred and violence, which is totally against God, it's totally wrong because you're harming your neighbor and harming other people's goods and, and businesses and individual lives, mm -hmm. that's evil. You're looking evil in the face. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, I always say that people who, well, either curse a lot or, or act out are, are folks who don't know how to express themselves in a in a positive way verbally well we we need to keep working on things one day at a time individually uh you know trying to be the utmost and the best that we can be with every person that we come in contact with and spread love and kindness as much as we can talk to people talk to strangers oh all the time <laughs> yes uh, well i'm just going to say one more thing i was with my friend george and i were with our friends ray Fay. He uh, does prison ministry, and he also works with Teen Challenge. Yes. And he did say that the Women's uh, Teen Challenge building will be opening in Hardwick, Vermont. It'll oh. Be the first in the state. No kidding. Yeah, I got that news from him today, and I guess he's involved in that. And uh, they al already have the Johnson Teen Challenge. For yes, men. yes. But this will be for women. What and, uh, great news that is, Diane. It, it is. And... Uh, he, um, he said, boy, you have no idea the, the, 
of how much need there is for it. They they get results. The yep, and the, and yep. the thing it, huh? and the thing is that the person who is uh, sorely addicted to drugs has to want to go there and has to want to change their ways and get away from the addiction yeah, or, well, or it yeah. doesn't work. Well, we've got to turn people's lives around one by one by one because then they can become good citizens, they can get jobs, they can be productive, and they can contribute rather than take away from society. Right, and we need them. We have to do it. We don't have any choice. And we've got, we've got it. you know, there's so many people out there, like little lights all over, doing their job. We don't know their names or numbers, but they're fighting this opiate crisis. They're fighting the marijuana. Uh, they're fighting for life, the lives of the people who are addicted. Oh, absolutely. I happen to know of a couple of people who work with folks who are addicted, and um, they have personal experience themselves with addiction, and they're just doing wonderful things. I'm really well, proud, proud of them. Yeah, the other thing I wanted to say real quickly, I'll get up. I got a phone call today from uh, Sally Barker McSweeney. Her dad is very, very ill in the medical center, Dr. Bob Barker, whom I'm sure everybody knows. And um, he was a dentist here in our community for a long time, and he could use a lot of uh, prayers tonight from anybody that believes in God and wants to pray. Oh, well, thank you for sharing that. I'm sure a lot of folks will respond to that, Diane. Yeah, and I'll, I'll call his daughter and tell her that I, I spoke, spoke about her dad on TV and because she called and asked for prayer. And we, oh. and we need to do that. That's how we're going to mm -hmm. be a good community is when we take care of each other. Yes, mm -hmm. and where, you know, where we don't push religion aside where where we thrive on our religion and allow people to practice, you know. Yeah. Allow one, me, nation, one nation under God, period. Uh, allow me to quote uh, the president last night uh, where he mentioned, how can you love America if you don't love one another? Amen. That's the, the truth. We are America. Yeah, right. So on that note, I will let you go and um, tell Dave I'm not getting off the couch any <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, my friend. Bye-bye. Take care. She's such a good person. Yeah, hold on, let yeah. me tell you, she is always doing something for somebody. Yep. It's amazing. She's a, a really great Christian woman, a, a wonderful is. person. She is. And she uh, will be blessed later on. Oh, absolutely. She's blessed now. She is blessed. Yep. Yes. Um, did, did you have anything you wanted to jump on right now before I proceed? Well, we could probably talk about our, our southern heritage and all that, that it's being torn down as we speak. Uh, it really distresses me to see these. Uh, it started with the, uh, the rebel flag, if you would. Uh, they took that away from the, the southerners. And then in Austin, Texas, I understand they've taken four Confederate statues Just down. Just recently, the government's so, taken, yeah, or yeah, the government yeah. is taking, or, or the, wherever they are, the university or whatever, is taking them down to preserve them from people who are rioting and destroying. Oh, I didn't hear that part. That's what my understanding is. I didn't hear that part. And also in, uh, in Virginia, Charlottesville. Yes. They actually, I think that was one of the states, they actually tore a flag down, uh, tore a... Uh, oh, yes, a woman climbed up. Yeah, and hung a rope. Hung a rope and, and pulled it down. I believe it was a woman. And then you saw all of these people who don't have a better thing to do with their lives. I believe they're paid for, bought and paid for, to stir things up in this country. At first, I thought I was in Iraq when I saw that, her doing that. <clears throat> And uh, again, th that's very, very bad to allow them to do that. Uh, it's an infringement on, on my rights as a citizen, as an American citizen, not a world-class citizen, I'm an American citizen. Yes, we are not globalists. No. And uh, I, it, it's uh, demoralizing to us. And I feel as though I've been uh, discriminated against in the fact that I, in March of, of every year, they have a gay lesbian parade in Burlington. I have to sit back and watch that. They fly their flags, okay? 
I don't agree with, I don't necessarily agree with them, but they can do what they want, but I don't want them flaunting that in my face. When you're tearing down our Southern heritage and taking the flags down or whatever, and we can't display our stuff, but these folks can display their stuff. I, I don't get it. It's, it's very discriminatory. Well, it's a lack of respect. If, if you'll allow me, this is, this is what I perceive. I know that George Soros, I believe he was born in Romania. Hungary? Hungary? Yeah. Okay. One of those countries. He is known to have destroyed the economy of two small countries already. Mm -hmm. I believe he despises this country of ours where we are a free people. He's a multi-billionaire. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he is behind all of these uprisings mm -hmm. around the country. I believe that they are busing people in from all over the place. They're giving them flags. They're making them T-shirts. It's all pre-organized. And you and I were talking the other night, and I mentioned the fact that I understand he's a dual citizen. And he also gave up his citizenship to the United States at one time. I, I don't know That's about what that. I heard. I don't know about that. But I know they speak of the Republicans having the Koch brothers. This guy is unreal. This guy is the Koch brothers time 10. And oh, oh. And he's undoing everything that's good in America. There's nothing. I don't believe there's anything wrong with the Koch brothers, except in the eyes of some, they're well to do. OK, Great. it's OK if you're on one side to be wealthy. But if you're a wealthy Republican, then, oh, then you're a bad person. Well, there's two standards out there, Linda. There's actually two standards out there. Well, um, what was I going to? By the way, just to backtrack a little bit and then we can move forward. Mm -hmm. I came across this um, regarding uh, sanctuary cities. I don't know where this came from. Law Enforcement Action Network, mm -hmm. Lean. Okay. I've Lean. donated yeah, to I them. I belong to Lean. And, yes, yeah, I've, I've donated, donated to, to them too. Yeah. And uh, they send me materials now and I then. I think, in fact, Ron Hosko, former yes. FBI yes. agent, yes. leads that. Yeah. So. Um, there are approximately 2.1 million legal or illegal immigrants with criminal convictions living free or behind bars in the United States, according to ICE, ICE's Secure Communities Office, that's Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Mm -hmm. Each year, about 900,000 legal and illegal immigrants are arrested, and 700,000 are released from jail, prison, or probation. Mm -hmm. ICE estimates that now there are 2 million criminal aliens at large in the U.S., and despite its rhetoric, the fact remains that the Obama administration willingly freed dangerous criminal aliens allowing them to continue to prey upon communities across the United States. I don't know. I just don't know how people get away with these things, but uh, there's a map here. And it shows uh, a map of the most prominent sanctuary cities in America. The map's and totally red. To my stunning amazement i looked and i saw the state of vermont as a red symbol of a sanctuary state it's just a glob of red i can't i Makes couldn't you feel I, good doesn't it no it doesn't i couldn't believe that i it made me sick to my stomach oh yeah oh yeah anyway um thanks to the senator Leahy's of the world you know oh please yeah <laughs> yeah oh dear now, um, not many Americans know much, if anything, about the Muslim Brotherhood. But the Muslim Brotherhood is the world's most influential jihadist organization. Mm -hmm. Most of the well-known terrorist organizations in the world came out of the Muslim Brotherhood, including ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Boko Haram, and many other violent jihadist organizations. The Muslim Brotherhood has also established a vast network here in the United States. Mm -hmm. 
In 2004, the FBI raided a Muslim Brotherhood safe house in Annandale, Virginia, and discovered the Muslim Brotherhood's master plan for conquering America. The primary way the Islamic Jihadist movement plans to destroy the United States is through what Muslim Brotherhood refers to as civilization jihad which includes literally resettling as much of the Islamic world as possible in this country. No wonder our president has set a limit on people coming into this country from some of those countries. I think there are six of them. Largely as a result of massive immigration from the Muslim world under the Obama administration, the number of Islamic supremacists in this country is growing, posing a dire threat to the survival of the America you and I love. What are we doing about it? Our current president is tuned in. President Trump sees the handwriting on the wall, but there are too many people who have gotten away with too much for too long in picking away at our, you know, our religion, our education system. What do you have in the colleges and universities? The crybabies in their little safe zones. You have liberal professors teaching them all about things that run counter to our country and what we believe in in this country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our, we have a debt of almost $20 trillion in this country. I remember one of the quotes from Thomas Jefferson, who said, it is the obligation of every, um, what is it, every uh, Congress to pay off the nation's debts as it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, what have we done? Obama doubled our national debt in eight years. That's one of the ways, and diminished our military. You're going to lead me right into our next... Go for it. The next area I'm I want to talk warm. about. I'm all worked up. <laughs> this little book right here, this little booklet, it's called Overthrow. And it's written by the uh, David Horowitz uh, organization, publications. And there's quite a bit to this book. This book tells why, as an American citizen, you sit back and you twiddle your thumbs and you say... This president isn't doing anything. Nothing's getting done. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I'll tell you why he's getting stuff done, but he's doing it with executive orders because he doesn't have people behind him that he needs to have behind him. And the reason he doesn't have people behind him that he needs to have behind him, the former president, which has only out of 45 presidents, there's only been two presidents that stayed back in Washington. This guy was one of them. He now... A couple miles from the White House has an operation set up and they got an actual, it's for the, you military folks out there that have served in the military, it's like a tactical operation center dealing with community organizing. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he brought in his chief, uh, chief of staff when he was in Washington by the name of Valerie Jarrett. She was a prominent Chicago lawyer. She was a devout, and I say again, devout Muslim. Obama's chief of staff tied directly to community organizing. She's also was strategically known as the night stalker. She slept in the White House with the Obamas. She had the president's ear at all times. He didn't make a move without her. And I made a note in here, going back to page five. You don't mean she actually slept with them? No, she slept. She slept. <laughs> I with, just wanted to clarify. She was the in third, the White She House. was the third party of that duel. Song. So she slept right within earshot of them. And uh, what the former president has done is unprecedented. American ex-presidents do not stay behind in Washington D.C. to undermine their successors. Even failed presidents 
well, Jimmy Carter, I didn't really think a lot of him until this guy came along, <laughs> who had occasionally taken shots at his successors, didn't stay planted in the nation's capital, obstruct and disrupt the new administration. I'm glad I'm not president, because I tell you what, I'd be sending the FBI over there, and I'd want to go in there and, and see their tactical That's boards. That's not and a bad idea. I'd, I'd like to see them concentrate on that, because basically what you're seeing here is you're seeing domestic terrorism created by a former president. How, what else do you call it? Yeah. They aren't sitting there watching Sesame Street. <laughs> Norma, that's true enough, my friend, true enough. Look, there is so much subterfuge going on in this country, and the reason why all of these leftists the, the ultra-extreme leftist, you know, the, um, what, what do I want to call them, progressives and um, the atheists and all these people who can't stand the new president because he's doing the right things to try to reconstruct what's been demolished in the previous eight-year administration, like rebuilding the military, for instance which is critically important. That's one of the primary jobs of the federal government. There are, how many, do you know how many jobs in the Constitution, do you know how many defined jobs the federal government has? No. 18. 18. Z stop. 18, stop. That's it. And I could read some of them if anybody wanted to hear them. But one is... Uh, military, you know, create a military and make sure that we're protected as a nation. Can I make a ch challenge to our two senators? Be my guest. Why don't you guys work a year with no wages, w work for free? You love America? Show me. That's an You're interesting... already millionaires, so what more do you need? That's an interesting point. Uh, that brings up something. Have you heard about the death tax? There was a 50% death tax. Um, well, I think it was 40, 50, 40%. 45%. But um, I would ask of you viewers to contact Senators Leahy and Sanders and Representative Welch and tell them that you would like them to repeal the death tax in 2017. The death tax penalizes... Americans who want to pass on their legacy to their children and grandchildren. By taxing their inheritance, even though you already paid taxes on the income. Okay? So the government wants to double tax whatever it is you have when you die in terms of property or money, a farm, whatever, and you want to leave that in your will to your children and grandchildren or some organization, whatever, the federal government, the IRS, wants to take, have this death tax that I believe would take 40% of whatever you have to, to give to your um, siblings, your family. Your family. Yeah. That is the money you already earned and paid taxes on once. They have no right to go in and do that. And it's interesting you say that because tonight in my mail, today's mail, I get a lot of mail. Me I too. just, uh, I just uh, received a notification from the Gun Owners of America. Uh, and they, uh, My phone rings off the hook constantly with the Tea Party movement and all that. But anyways, <laughs> uh, they... Uh, there's a gal in New York, and I believe the name is Mahoney or Mavoney or something like that. She proposed, I believe, a, a bill to have gun owners purchase $10,000 worth of insurance as protection against liabilities. It, it's, it's in this newsletter. I didn't bring the newsletter, but it's, they're trying secretly to get this through the house. And the, the uh, NRA and all these folks are up in arms over all this. Stuff. It's not the law-abiding citizens that own guns who are a problem. They don't misuse them. So are they going to make sure that 
how are they going to make sure that any criminal is going to have this $10,000 of insurance? They won't buy it. No, of course not. It's they don't penalizing our laws anywhere. Once again, Norm, it is penalizing the law-abiding citizen. Gun owner. So much so that the NRA now currently, as we speak, under their list of insurances, and they have a lot of them, I'm a member of the NRA, you can purchase an insurance so that if you had, if you were to take and stand your ground in your home or what have you, and you got in, because now you can actually get into a bind by protecting yourself. You know what I'm saying? This is not a stand your ground state, Vermont. Florida is. You're but, kidding. No, this isn't. No, this is a stand your ground state. Don't we have a right to protect ourselves? According to the Constitution, we do. Well, we live under a constitution. Well, they don't. They don't believe in our constitution. Okay. But, well, that's something to bring up to our legislators right now. But anyway, uh, the gal name her name is Dana Loesch. She brings it out. She's a oh, member yes. of the NRA and she's a gun enthusiast and whatever. And uh, but you can purchase a, a sub policy or an umbrella policy that if you got into a shootout in your home, in you had to go to court or protect yourself, they would protect you with their lawyers, the NRA lawyers. But there is an insurance out there from the NRA. You shouldn't you have, to, have to do that. You shouldn't if have someone to. Illegal, if, if someone breaks into your home, they've already broken a law, haven't mm -hmm. they? Mm -hmm. So they get what's coming to them. But expect to be quizzed and cross-examined and what have you. In fact, I was told through rumor, if you would, that if you had to defend yourself in your home, that person had better be inside your threshold, across your threshold. Don't think it on your porch couch, because it doesn't. That's where you get into these They have to be situations. inside the house. They've got to be inside the house. If you have to shoot them outside, pull them in. But. What have we come to? Yeah. Well, I'm not giving up hope, and I'm not closing my mouth. As long as I have breath, and the opportunity, I'm going to keep standing up for what's right in this country. That's basically why you and I are still here tonight talking about this stuff. I'm still soldiering. You know? Yep. Well, I'm soldiering in my own way, Norm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, let's see here. Let me, uh, can you, can I run through some things that the sure. president's speech last night? Sure, go I, ahead. I sat there and took notes. The presidential address to the nation. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it was Fort Myers, Virginia at 9.02 p.m. President will now hold Pakistan more accountable. Equals the new Afghanistan strategy. Also, well, I meant, I read this paragraph. Let's go down here further. Uh, the president said, America's enemies must never know our plans. Boy, that sounds different from the previous administration. Well, yes. There will be no timetable, only conditions on the ground. Uh, India um, makes billions of dollars in trade with the U.S., India. Yes. In fact, uh, traveling, you see a lot of Indians and Pakistani pe people that are Indians running these motels, like these oh, yes. motels throughout the country. Yes. Uh, so India makes billions of dollars in trade with the U.S. All restrictions from previous administrations have been lifted. So basically, our soldiers now can go into battle and not have their hands tied. I don't know how many of these... Oh, yes. I don't know how many of these soldiers I donated money to, being a former soldier myself. Uh, the colonel, uh, Lawler, or not Lawler, he was... He refused to go to combat a third time, I believe it was. He was a decorated veteran because there was question about this president's birth certificate. And they actually sent him to prison. Not this president. No, I mean uh, the, the, the previous, previous president. president. And uh, <clears throat> they actually sent him to prison for a period of time. I donated money to him. He was a colonel. He was in the medical corps. Uh, I donated to uh, different ones. Excuse me one second. The the restrictions that were put on the military in a fighting situation under the Obama administration was disgraceful. Mm -hmm. And and our um, border patrol, the same thing. Um, the they they were 
they had to catch and release. They couldn't keep people and, and get them incarcerated or anything. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Lawrence, a young man. Clint Lawrence, yes. Clint Lawrence. And uh, Colonel uh, West is fighting for him. I've sent, I've sent letters for him. He was sent to Leavenworth for ordering his men because he just lost the men a day or two before. This and is where, they, was this in Afghanistan? Afghanistan, where a motorcycle came upon him. They ordered the guy to stop, and he didn't stop. And the, the lieutenant ordered his men to shoot, and they shot the guy and killed the guy. Well, the motorcyclist was, uh, was spotted by some of the other American troops mm -hmm. and gave Clint Lawrence notice mm -hmm. that this guy is, is on a motorcycle, uh, more than likely wearing the same kind of ammo or... or whatever vest um, and you got to watch out and he wanted to protect his men so he fired or had someone fire on this guy and they the put him me too he did the right thing to protect his soldiers and he's currently been in i think he's been in 11 for life now. don't they have him for well, life they've had him, they've got him in there for a long time but he's been in there two years already that's disgusting and president trump should pardon him and get him out of there yes you know, uh, this president is not tying our soldiers' hands. He's no. allowing them to operate. Uh, I've even after I served in the military, and, and I, I'm not a combat veteran. I'm a stateside. I've served entirely here stateside. But anyway, my I went up and saw. I had Bravo Company up in Enosburg, and I saw them guys off when they left. And I told some of the young soldiers, I said, "Listen, you guys, I've never been in combat. I'm not. I'm not an expert on this, but." Whatever you do, don't sit there and think, should I shoot or should I not shoot? You shoot, iron it back, we'll iron it out back at stateside here. Uh, so that's the information I gave him. That's what I would have done. Yeah. But again, he's in, he's in Leavenworth. He should be pardoned. And, the uh, poor young man. Yeah. He did the nice, right thing to nice protect his troops mm -hmm. when, when obviously one of the enemy was coming mm -hmm. forward toward them on a motorcycle. And they've already had a sapper... Uh, they had other instances of that happening. Before. Yeah. So yeah. it was fresh in their mind. Anyway, getting back to this thing here, uh, we, uh, we won't fight battles from Washington, the president says. Basically, by fighting, oh, this president's not good. He's going to allow his generals, and we got three of them in there right now, and they're fine generals, and they're going to make the decisions as they should be. Uh, our troops will fight to win. Boy, that's different. Uh, we yeah. have asked our NATO partners to help fund uh, because of which they already have. And he mentioned the president did bring out the fact that they are starting to help with money. And, and who is uh, the our NATO partners? Oh, well, they're, they're yeah, he laid it on them, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Our mission is not unlimited with a blank check. Our patience is not unlimited. In, in every generation, we have faced down evil. We must honor the sacrifice of our fallen heroes. We must achieve an honorable and enduring outcome. We cannot have enduring peace without peace amongst ourselves. Boy, wow, is that a mouthful. Well, I, I was just thinking as you were are saying that, is that we cannot focus all of our energy and resources abroad when we have so much subterfuge and undermining and conflict and people trying to destroy the the matrix, the foundation of our country. Here. All the more reason to secure our borders. Yeah, amen. You know, uh, 9 on 1 was planned and directed from Afghanistan. 9 11, right? Uh, yeah. Directed from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yep. In uh, leaving Iraq so soon, we created a vacuum. We will learn from history and we will win with this president. Again, ground conditions will guide our strategy. We are not nation building again. Wow, that's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan is, is uh, housing the terrorists. We are fighting retribution. Uh, we are fighting. Retribution will be fast and powerful. No, again, this is America's longest war. USA to ask neighbors to contribute more. Uh, it shows here January, July 2017. Uh, there was 1,984 bombs dropped from that short period of time. Well, a um, couple of things. Uh, when it comes to money, I can't remember how many billion it was that Obama gave to Afghanistan, which oh, yeah. is helping them to build up their nuclears. And it was on marked money. It was flown in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. On pallets. Oh, yeah. I know. 
And the other they thing... They didn't deny it. The other thing is, we, uh, Obama paid, I believe it was $6 billion to the United Nations an anti-America organization. I don't have time to go into all that I have about the United Nations. I'll do that another show. And uh, we need to keep terrorists from crossing our borders, the president said, uh, i.e. border security. Maybe we should have a bounty on terrorists. <laughs> if you ever worn the uniform, I'm speaking to you out there, you will understand the president. And if you respect the American soldier's uniform, you will also understand this president. When one part of America hurts, we all hurt. Let that be a lesson to our expert editorial writers in the St. Albans Messenger. <laughs> oh, I am so tired of reading Bloomberg News and um, what's the other one? The New York, um, what's the, not the Times, what's the other one? New York. Not the Argus. No, no it's another New York paper. Um, post. Um, we need, how about a few uh, uh, conservative articles from, if you're going to take them from other big newspapers around the country, how about a little bit of uh, balance? Mm -hmm. I am so sick of reading those. Yeah. I, I don't even read them anymore, actually. I just say, oh, scratch that one. So um, we're, we're down, well, the clock's gone, but we're down to probably five minutes or so, I'm guessing. Four minutes, I get the word. So, um, so you got Sheriff David Clark there in your... I five. do. I love that man. I just love him. He, um, he is a, a black sheriff mm -hmm. from um, Wisconsin, I Wisconsin. believe it is. Wisconsin, yep. And he's so smart, and I wish he'd run for Congress, although it's great to have him where he is. They're, they want to see him run for Congress. In fact, I wrote a... I, I, uh, Probably the Democrats want to see him run to get him out of the sheriff's well, play. <laughs> that could be, because he's very good at what he does. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he says, now we are faced... Well, let me see. Our country is facing a serious crisis. For eight years under Obama, our borders were left undefended. Millions of illegal aliens, including some extremely dangerous and violent ones, flooded into America. Now we are faced with the enormous task of securing our borders, deporting illegal aliens, and protecting the American people. As the sheriff of Milwaukee County, I am on the front lines of this battle every day. Milwaukee has a large population of illegal aliens. Recently, I announced that I would cooperate with federal immigration enforcement. That's ICE. Mm -hmm. As a result, thousands of protesters demonstrated in the streets against me for simply doing my job, just like Sheriff Arpaio. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the protesters were thinking, just know that some were waving Mexican flags and others were waving communist banners. And they're in our country. Yes, the protesters were putting Mexico and communist revolution ahead of America. The truth is the left is going nuts because I will not allow Milwaukee to be a sanctuary city where the rule of law doesn't apply. I believe there is a deliberate purpose behind the left street demonstrations and rabble rousing. It's this. The left wants to make it practically impossible to enforce common sense immigration laws so that our immigration system breaks down completely. A and very smart man. It's funny you mention that because when President Bush was in office, uh, they wanted, they were looking for money from me for a donation for the Republican Party. And I wrote back and I told them, unless they pardon uh, Compio and Ramos, who were sent to prison for oh, doing yeah. their job. Remember that? Yeah, I think they, he did pardon. We're them. all set. OK, it's time to wind down. Thanks for coming on. It's been fun sharing the show with you, folks. I hope you learned some things tonight. Look up Agenda 21. That's the UN Agenda 21. It will knock your socks off, and you have to know about it. I'll see you again next week. Have a great week ahead. Good night.